but the next one, they came right behind him and uh, started to fire. And he blew up right in front of me and then down. Mansfeld gets three kills in the battle. As the internationals hone their hunter skills, a brotherhood grows between them. That brotherhood, beyond nationality, is forged in fire. The internationals will help change the course of the war. Putting their lives on the line for a common cause, the internationals and the pilots of the RAF develop mutual respect and admiration. We learn to admire the stiff upper lip of RAF because they were very calm and cool on their radios. And we uh, picked that up. So even if you were badly shot up, or scared to death. You sort of took 30 seconds and uh, then you, you yourself came on the radio very calm and uh, like an RAF pilot. I was told when I went to take over the Canadian wing in the beginning of 1943 and they were based at Kennedy that they were wild men and they got drunk and long out and they wouldn't take kindly to an Englishman and so on. They were all disciplined, never shaved, nothing. They were a marvellous bunch of people. They were first class. Uh, of course, the Poles were very, in 1940, were very bitter. And uh, 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 they fought with an extreme sort of uh, bitterness and cynicism and that sort of thing and showed no mercy and often gave up their own lives when they ran people and so on. Polish ace Stanislaw Skalski will score 18 kills over Europe and North Africa. I will use some... Silly expression. I mean, we were sportsmen. Only in this sport come one thing you have. You, each one have to remember that you fighting for your life as well. So you're not to kill somebody, but to win. Francis Gabreski flies in the Pacific, but looks toward Europe. As a Polish-American, the exploits of the Polish pilots flying with the RAF give him special pride. Reading the papers, I said, a Polish squadron, the Polish pilots in the Battle of Britain were uh, shooting down airplanes, and I said, gee, that's Polish. I, I can speak Polish, I can understand Polish, I can read Polish and so forth. I can find some, if I could find some sort of good way to get into the European theater, uh, I could possibly get some good and valuable training on the hands of the Polish pilot. Gubreski manages to get his transfer to England, where he flies with the fabled Poles. And they were a bunch of little tigers, but they knew the strong points of their aircraft, they knew the weakness of their aircraft, and above all, they had respect for all the German pilots. Seven Americans fly in the Battle of Britain. The ranks of the American Eagle squadrons begin to swell. And they undergo a quick baptism of fire. They had a very accelerated training, and I think probably looking back on it, for propaganda reasons and other reasons, they were probably thrown into combat a little too early. Therefore, the 3rd Eagle Squadron, 133, they went off on a mission escorting bombers to Morlaix in France, and none of them came back. And it was a very dramatic uh, scene when I went to uh, Debden and uh, went into the officers sleeping quarters and went into room after room they hadn't had time to clean up the personal effects and here were half lit written letters dear mom everything's fine and the the, the toothbrushes and the shaving cream and so on uh, really brought it home all these empty rooms in september 1942 the eagle squadrons become part of the u.s army air forces Flying under their own flag means a lot to the Eagles, 
in pride and in pay. The extra money provides an unexpected advantage. The Englishmen used to go off to the pub and drink uh, beer and uh, we'd go off with their girlfriends and, and uh, they used to make the comment that the trouble with the Americans was that they were overpaid, oversexed and over here. The American Eagles discover a special use for the May Day emergency radio channel. And sometimes coming back I used to switch on to that channel and instead of hearing uh, what I had expected to hear, I heard these people saying, would you please telephone Daphne on May 4th, 3637, and tell her I'll be a little late for our date at the Savoy. We were always full of fun, full of jokes, full of enthusiasm. And uh, of course, it was always the other guy that was going to get shot down, not you. The internationals take on the Luftwaffe in every combat theater. As Allied might grows, dreams of revenge turn to thoughts of victory. Robert Spurtle, a New Zealander with the RAF. One day we were very lucky to intercept the last raid by JU-87s against England and their fighter escort had foolishly gone above a cloud layer and our squadron 74 caught these. Germans coming in and uh, it was just straight slaughter. But it was a marvelous thing to, for once, catch them and really give it to them. Fighter pilots take pride in their skill, bravado, and the planes they fly. They also develop a keen respect for old-fashioned luck. You know, during the war, I, I always saying, Napoleon used to say, if you want to go on war, you need three things. First of all, money. Second, money. Third, money. I used to do the same thing to the war. Luck, luck, and luck. I was shot down twice during the Battle of Britain even. I don't know how I'm still alive. So luck is with me. <laughs> Colin Gray, a New Zealander, gets lucky when a Messerschmitt bores in for the kill. Somebody said uh, bandits. I uh, managed to get on the, the tail of one of them and it gave him a good burst and I was surprised to see him pull up and bail out. And while I was watching him do this, there was a hell of a clatter like somebody running a stick along a corrugated iron fence and I realised I was being shot at. And this gave me a bit of a fright. But uh, perhaps fortunately for me, one of the cannon shells hit uh, the uh, port wing and jammed the ailerons in the um, up position so that the aircraft flicked over into a dive. I couldn't have de devised a better escape manoeuvre. Desmond Sheen, Australian, will score seven kills in his Spitfire. His luck holds during a furious battle. I was sent up um, to attack a, a formation of Do 215s. I was attacking this uh, with, when, when I was shot down and I had to bail out over Kent. This was about 12,000 feet. And I had a, a grandstand view of, of the, the whole of the battle because there were bombs falling in London, others over Dover, and there were dogfights overhead, and an ME 109 went down in flames quite close to me. I bailed out and landed uh, as light as a feather in the field. Early in 1943, the momentum of the war turns. The fight is carried to the enemy in the skies over Fortress Europe. We began sweep operations over the channel. Uh, they weren't ex extremely popular with us because uh, we had to fight over enemy territory now and uh, they were fairly hairy operations. Now on the defensive, German forces are spread thin over Europe, Norway, Russia, the Balkans, Greece, Italy, and North Africa. The Luftwaffe rushes new pilots into action. Most are no match for the combat-savvy international squadrons. 
Ragnar Dogger is over Germany and looks up at a formation of Luftwaffe bombers. We attacked from below and uh, shut down 12 of them and didn't lose any. But later we found out that these planes were flown to forward bases by inexperienced pilots. So it didn't take very much to shoot them down, which was a pity. The Luftwaffe is short of planes, but the pilots are long on discipline and courage. I remember a case of getting on the tail of two aircraft. As you know, in the fighter world, you fly in pairs. And the number two looks after the number one. And they were so well disciplined that uh, I was lining up my aircraft to shoot down this uh, number two. 